What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another Against All Odds podcast. I'm here with Connor. Connor, do you want to give me your full name, yep. your age, and what position you play? Okay. Uh, my name is Connor McGlynn. I'm 24 years old, and I'm a center defensive midfielder. And? And a center back. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what? where are you from? I'm from Queens, New York. Queens, New York. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to roll the intro, and then we'll get started in the podcast. Awesome. So from Queens, actually, first, you know, before we even get into your story, I wanted to talk about just the contrast from my last guest to okay. you. Okay, gotcha. Tulu is cool. He's right. interesting. Okay. He's tough. Right. He's manly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe yourself? Basically, all the words that you just described, Tulu, you know, to maybe a little bit of a higher degree, uh, I'd say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... But, you know, I'm in touch with my feminine side as well, yeah. you know. But other than that, just just a nice guy. Good good for the locker room, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, no, I 100% agree. <laughs> 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 definitely definitely cool, though. I mean, that's what you and Tulu are the same thing in, in yeah, that aspect. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, from Queens, New York, mm -hmm. well, tell me about your family situation. Yeah, so I grew up uh, in Middle Village, Queens. Uh, mom, dad, and brother, and had a dog growing up as well. Uh Dad came from Ireland, um, so, you know. Does he have an accent? He does have an accent, okay. yeah. Yeah, so he was basically the guy that got us into soccer, uh, basically trained us when we were kids. And mm -hmm. my mom's from Queens, grew up in Queens, so she's been super supportive this entire time. And, and a lot of people know I have a brother, Jack, who's currently playing for the Philadelphia Union in the MLS. So, mm -hmm. you know, I grew up around a tight-knit group basically but no it's been a it was a great childhood growing up with three very supportive people yeah your brother's been starting the last couple games yeah right? yeah Doing so well. yeah no unfortunately they lost to, to lafc but he's been absolutely crushing it this year you know mm -hmm. at 19 years old only i think he's you know started more games this year than he did of all of last year so far so no he's been he's been really crushing it especially with the union and at the u20 level at yeah, the, that's the national team so that's that's really cool yeah um and then you guys are five years apart then right Five years apart, yeah. So he's I'm a '98 and he's a 2003. So Damn, crazy to think about. It makes you feel super old. That's what's insane is like I think about anybody born after like 2001 mm -hmm. is that they weren't alive for 9. You probably don't even remember 9/11. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I was a baby. Basically, and not to like make the mood of the podcast all down. But. From New York too, so you know, <laughs> yeah. definitely, definitely hits home a little bit more. But yeah, I don't remember that at all. Yeah, that's that's it's weird. Like you see the teammates all of a sudden just shift like that yeah so but yeah no he's a young kid and i think he's got a great future ahead so yeah. we'll see what happens yeah that's sick and then so for you like you said your dad's irish yep and did you play like any other sports growing up or was it just footy 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 from the very beginning uh i played basketball for a bit i was pretty good at free throws but i could never really get to the free throw line <laughs> yeah, gotcha. so you know kind of took me out of the game mm -hmm. unfortunately you know i was pretty useless then yeah but no, basketball was really fun. You got to meet new friends. Um, but yeah, soccer from the get was was kind of my thing. And were you always a big kid? Because you're six foot four. Right. Yeah. And sometimes I look <laughs> at you and I see like five nine McGlynn because you don't want to go up for headers. Right. Yeah. No, naturally. But, but like, five nine is generous. You know, five <laughs> were, you <nine. laughs> always, were you always bigger as a kid? No, I was actually uh, pretty much a late bloomer mm -hmm. up until I got to college. So going into high school, I was like 4'11". Mm -hmm. So... I think I showed you a picture one time of me. It was, <laughs> yeah. it was pretty bad, but... Um, <laughs> Can I put it on the podcast? Can you I, could, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'll okay. give you permission for that one. But. If you're listening, go to YouTube, look up this podcast just so you can see this photo because it's funny. No, I mean, not funny. I was... It's, it's, funny. It's, it's funny. It's funny. It's funny. Yeah, it's funny. So, You've come a long way. You've come a very long way. Definitely come a long way. But yeah, I was never the biggest kid. You know, I'd had to rely on more of my technique, but now it's it's kind of the opposite. Mm -hmm. So I've just kind of grown into my body. And mm -hmm. now I'm watching my brother do it at this late. He's also a late bloomer. He's 19. Yeah. And now he's kind of sprouting up kind of like I did. Because how tall is he now? He's six foot or six foot one now. So uh -huh. he's getting there. And then soon he's going to fill out. And obviously be strong like me. So, you know, that's <laughs> exactly, <just laughs> exactly. All right, cool. And then, so did you and your brother like have a lot of, like, I'm obviously you trained a lot together, mm -hmm. but was there a lot of competition? I mean, even though you're five years older, did you guys compete with a lot of stuff or was it just like more, you were like more of an older mentor, like teaching him stuff? No, I think, I think me playing against him and kind of 
beaten him up a little bit as a kid. I de- definitely think made him stronger. I think you can see it when he plays. I think he's he's always confident. He's comfortable on the ball. Like doesn't matter how big the guy is. Like he's still confident to mm-hmm. want the ball and get the ball. So I think we always had that competitive edge with each other. You know, we would train, do one v ones and stuff like that in the mm-hmm. backyard, and you know, try different moves. So that was always just such a fun part. We just go over. We were lucky enough to have a a park across the street from our house in That's Queens, sick. which, you know, there's not a lot of land to have <laughs> parks in Queens. So we were lucky enough to live across the street. And, um, yeah, we just go over there, play one V ones, try different moves and see what worked, see what didn't. But no, it was, it was a great experience and we were definitely super competitive. And you said that your dad had like trained you for most of that. How what was the, like the ratio what was the split of like your dad actually going out and doing like proper sessions with you guys versus you and your brother just going out for fun, kicking around doing one V ones. Yeah. So we usually we get home from school um and then just you know we'd go by ourselves uh just play a little 1v1 before we actually had team practice Mm -hmm. so i think the one thing that my dad instilled in us is that like you know the team practice that we do is not enough Mm -hmm. you know you're not getting enough touches like you're not you know it's not individualized so Mm -hmm. you know he would either train us before practice or we would go by ourselves over to the park and just play 1v1 or or do some passing with each other just to work on different aspects of our game before we actually got to the team practice Mm -hmm. that's so true like the the individual is not individualized and it's like what a lot of people understand is like team training especially the pro level but even when you're at like a the youth level too is it really is about the team and it's just right. like the there's a lot of times you're playing 11 v 11 there's one ball you can play for 15 minutes and get 10 touches absolutely so like for you to be able to do an extra stuff individual stuff whether it's ball mastery 1v1 shooting getting extra reps doing that because you're not going to get that in your team session right the team sessions are important for you to learn how to play and make all those decisions on the field but it's not the amount of touches that you need to become a pro for sure for even if sure. you're training five days a week with the team oh for sure yeah i mean you're playing your games on the weekends it's so very structured when you're growing up mm-hmm. you know you have your team training two three times a week but it's definitely not enough to reach the le- next mm-hmm. level for sure and even at the pro level it's even more so because like even though like yes we start still are trying to develop and everything but like really it's about just winning on the weekend right and so it doesn't really matter about your individual development as a player and so it's like you need to take it upon yourself like i need to get more shots i need to work my long ball here i need to whip in crosses or i need to beat connor in two touch because you know if whatever happened like today i got i beat you twice once once that's okay and then uh, i beat you the second time <laughs> yeah because First you, place. you guys gained up three v one on me that's what, you, ha- that's what happens when you talk. When you talk, it's it's over. Like <laughs> you know, you get found out. That's fine. It takes you, Antoine, and Robin LaPere both all all to gang up on me and beat me in one. All better two touch. two touch players. That's all I'm saying. I'm sticking to it. We'll see. But even then, like today after training, we played two touch right. for 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, just like, to get extra touches in. Mm-hmm. You know, that that's that's the important part. I'm a big believer, like you can't you can't stop improving. Like, mm-hmm. you know, even if it's two touch and it's silly, like you're still working on something. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. putting in that extra fifteen to twenty minutes after each session, like it definitely adds up over time. So yeah. that's really important for uh-huh. me. Uh-huh. So that's good. I mean, that's a really good lesson. Like your dad was like taught you from super early on. Get extra work and get extra training in. Um that's great. So growing up in New York, like you said, you had the park across the street, right. which is a pretty good setup. Right. How else was like, how was your youth? growing up in that area in queens did you like it did you hate it did like did you not know anything else like what was it like i loved it you know there's always like in queen like there's always something going on there's always something to do you know we played like a lot of pickup games at the park and i mm-hmm. think that's like that's a great place to express yourself to try new mm-hmm. things and we would just go over play even if it's me and my brother playing 2v2 against two kids you know something like that super free-flowing um but yeah, it was amazing growing up in Queens. I definitely have no complaints. You know, there's always something to do. You know, some places like everything closes at nine, you know, mm-hmm. Hartford, it's a little weird. Sometimes things close pretty early, but in New York, there's always something to do mm-hmm. no matter what. Yeah. And then, so when did you, did you ever join an academy team? So at first, uh, I was lucky enough that Blauweiss Gachi, uh, was right across the street from my house. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they have a great program there where they're basically developing kids to try and get to the collegiate level. That's mm-hmm. kind of the goal. Um, so yeah, joined there. I played for the school team, the Catholic school team for a bit and then tried to make the jump over there. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, when did you make the jump to that? How old were you? I was in first grade, you know, oh, wow. like, so young, young. Yeah. So they start you out kind of like, you know, with little teams and there's, gets to a point where there's like an A team all the way to like an F team, you uh-huh. know, there's just so many teams, <laughs> yeah. but 
No, it was super fun, and but it was a super competitive environment because you had kids from Long Island, New mm-hmm. Jersey, kind of from all, where all, all everywhere because that was the academy everyone wanted to play in. Mm-hmm. So it was super competitive every day, and from that young age, kind of put me in that environment where you had to compete every day, or mm-hmm. like you know you lose your spot and you go down to. Were you on the A team at the beginning? I was. Okay. I was lucky enough to be on the A team. You know, I definitely worked hard. Uh, made the A team, which was was which was awesome, and I was lucky enough to basically play with the same kids basically throughout up until I was like seventeen. So mm-hmm. you know we had a good core group that just kind of kept developing together and working hard. So that mm-hmm. was that was special for sure. And then from what age did you say I'm going to become a professional footballer? Man, I thought when I was a young kid, you know everyone wants to be a professional footballer, and you know some guys know my story. I kind of fell out of love in college, to be honest, really? where I was just like wow, like, I don't know if I have what it takes, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But, you know, from a young age, like, everyone looks up to, you know, their favorite player. Mine was Steven Gerrard. I'd watch this guy on TV. He could score, shoot, Mm -hmm. tackle. Like, he was, like, my ideal player, the one that I tried to emulate my game out of. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you know, you have your ups and downs. So, you know, I definitely, for most of my childhood, playing for Gachi, like, when we were super successful, you know, definitely all-time high. I'm like, wow, like, you know, if I keep developing, we'll see how it goes. Physically, I wasn't developing, which was tough. Mm -hmm. All the other kids were getting bigger. They were filling out, and I was having trouble putting on weight, you Mm -hmm. know, so I was skinny. I I wasn't a big recruit, so, you know, I went to college, and I kind of lost my confidence, and Mm -hmm. that's tough. When you lose your confidence, Mm -hmm. I think, as you're seeing at the pro level, guys go up and down, Yeah, yeah. but when they're confident, they're playing usually at their best, so I lost that. It's crazy. You literally turn... When you're a confident player versus when you're unconfident, you're literally the same exact across the board, yeah. skill level, physical traits, everything. But you go just turn into a completely different player. Oh, for sure. And it, it, sometimes it's like week by week. Sometimes it's year by year. Like it's just so crazy. Yeah. When you lose or gain confidence, how well or bad you can play. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And he, yeah like it got to a point where I just wasn't, like when I got to college, I just wasn't backing myself. You uh-huh. know, I was playing different positions. You know, we were a team that had pretty good players but we were underperforming so that took a mental toll and then it got to my senior year and I was playing striker Mm -hmm. so somewhere where I'd never played before um didn't have any experience and as bad as it sounds I knew I I didn't think I was going to be good at it you know Mm -hmm. I did okay like I scored a few goals but you know I kind of lost enjoyment with the game Mm because you know I wasn't getting on the ball as much and I wasn't playing midfield like I really wanted to but Mm -hmm. You know, you learn to to get through that. You know, you learn to to sacrifice certain things for the team when the team needs certain things. Um, you know, you just try and provide it as best you can. Yeah. So from from first grade until seventeen years old, you were on Blauweiss Gauchi. Blauweiss Gauchi. Yeah, from Queens. Yeah. And then you said when we were just talking, like hanging out beforehand, but you said that you got a lot of like shit in high school because like you didn't oh, join yeah. the high school team. Yeah. So and because you're in your own academy and doing all that. Yeah. So they have a, I mean, I don't know if it's countrywide, but in New York, like you definitely, it got to a point where you couldn't play for your school team and academy team at the same time. Mm-hmm. And so my freshman year of high school, I played most of the games with the high school team because we weren't, we were pre-academy technically yeah. at that point. But then I got called up to a game for the U16, which at that time was Academy. Mm -hmm. And I played a game with them. So I couldn't play in the semifinals of counties or something like that. Uh So then after that, it was just kind of a whirlwind of just negativity, to be (laughs) fair. But And I didn't manage that well. I kind of just didn't say anything. I kind of just put my head down, just would go to school and train like normal. But, Uh you know, that wasn't an enjoyable experience for sure. It's funny, like, I I would imagine, like, Connor now, if, if people were giving you shit and saying, like, oh, blah, blah, you'd fire back and, like... <laughs> oh, for sure. I'd laugh it off or fire back, but then, like, I don't even think I was confident enough in myself to just say anything back, because it was a lot. Like, it was, like, as, like, 14, 15-year-old mm-hmm. kid, like, you know, definitely, like, the school itself was a good soccer school. Like, they had a lot of expectations, and, mm-hmm. like, you know, I would back myself to be probably one of the better players there, and not being able to play definitely sucked. Like they, they ended up winning a few championships and rightfully so, mm-hmm. you know, they definitely deserved it, but it would have been nice to have been a part of that. You yeah. know, did any of those kids go on to play professionally? 
I don't believe so, but one of the kids is my best friend. Uh, yeah, we went to college, played in college together, and you know he's still living in Queens. And mm-hmm. but yeah, he still gives me crap sometimes for not playing for the high school team. He's like, oh, you know what we could have been if you were there. But <laughs> what's his no, name? Jesse Rodriguez. Yeah. Screw you, Jesse Rodriguez. <laughs> no, absolutely not. He's class. But yeah, he was my college roommate, and it was crazy because we weren't really like good friends in high school. Uh-huh. You know, because when you play on the school team or you play on any team, you get really close. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know him super well in high school. And then kind of we both committed to Siena College. He came up to me and he's like, hey, like, you know, congrats on committing. Like, do you want to live together? And it was kind of a shock because, uh, like, we never really talked like mm-hmm. that. But, yeah, he turned it now. Now we're best buds. So it's, it's it's been a crazy journey for us. And then so you again, we talked about this because we when we were in Birmingham. Right. Trying to find a, a convenience store the night oh, before yeah. a game to yeah. get one of your energy drinks. Yep, yep. And uh, we walked around <laughs> for about 40 minutes trying to find a convenience store because Birmingham, Alabama has no stores. Nothing. In downtown, nothing. nothing. So we walked around the entire time. So I basically know your entire story already. But you said that like in high school, like I was like, what'd you do? What'd you do for fun? Like did you have right. sleepovers, all this stuff. And you, you, it was just grind. Like you just yeah. went to school. You trained with your dad and your brother. You went to team training yeah. and you came home. Yeah, that kind of was it. You know, I had a, a solid group of a few friends and that's all I felt like I really needed. Like mm-hmm. I would hang out with them sometimes after school. But, you know, a lot of the focus was on just getting better because, you know, I think I get I got to a point where I realized like how big a college education and a college scholarship would be. So working mm-hmm. towards that, I think it was super important. And then I was at the age where I'm seeing my brother do things that was just out of this world Mm -hmm. crazy good so seeing a talented young kid you got to be like a good role model for that you got to work hard you know you got to train before training you know work after training and then work on your weaknesses so it didn't seem like the most fun but it ended up being very very like beneficial in the long run i think it's called like type two fun or type one i can't remember which type it is but there's like type one fun i might be getting these backwards but type one fun is like going to a party going out, hanging out with friends, like whatever. It's fun in the moment. And type two fun is like where it sucks. Yeah. But then you look back at it and you're like, wow, that was really fun. No, I'm telling you, because we had some, you know, even, even my mom could attest too. she go to some of the sessions as well. Like there were some crazy sessions where we're like, you know, so tired and dead. Yeah. But you, we know like all that work you put in, like, you know, eventually it'll come to something good, mm-hmm. even if you don't reach your goal. Because I, yeah, I told you, I got to a point where I was like, wow, like i I don't think I'm going to be a professional at all, Mm -hmm. but you know what? Like I worked so hard at something and like, you know, I can say that I did it, you Mm -hmm. know, that I worked my ass off and, and maybe it didn't come, but still worked really, really hard. So whatever I put my, my efforts into, I know I'll be really good at. Mm -hmm. Um, what did one of those sessions look like? Like what walk me through like a typical McGlynn family session? Okay. Um, (laughs) so we, as you know, we are not the quickest family out there. So we would do... You're not bad, though. You make fun of yourself, but you're not... I'm not slow, but I definitely am not... Fast. Fast. That's not one of your better qualities. Not one of my better qualities. You know what's funny? I got a video coming out tomorrow about how you can succeed as an unathletic or slow footballer. And just put a picture (laughs) of me. (laughs) So, um, like, we would do, like, a lot of footwork drills, um, you know, doing ladder work, you know, hurdles and stuff like that. Cause mm-hmm. we were, we weren't athletic. So, and we were also like super skinny. So we do a little bit of strengthening and stuff like that, uh, whether that be push ups, sit ups. But then it was, everything was with the ball. It mm-hmm. was basically like we said it was fitness with the ball, mm-hmm. which, you know, whether that be like dribbling, passing, like stuff like that. Um, but I think you see it in our games now, like we're pretty good, like confident with the ball. And yeah. I think what my dad tried to get in us is just be confident all the time with the ball, mm-hmm. no matter who's on you, where you are, like just be comfortable with the ball. So we yeah. kind of kind of did drills kind of around that. That was one of the, the first things I noticed about you when I came here. And like I've played against you. I've seen you play, but like you still, you see you and you're six foot four, you're a big guy. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, like, you know, you have an, like a conception of like what you're going to be like on the field, but then you're so good with the ball in tight spaces and fluid with the ball. If, like I said, I, I call you, you look, you look like you're five, nine, but you look like a smaller, very technical center mid, but then you're also bigger, stronger, everything too. It's, it's rare to see players that are six foot four with your feet. That's the only compliment I'll give you in this podcast. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. I mean, he just stressed like just being super comfortable with the ball. And like, I think, you know, you could talk about my game, but if you look at my brother's game as well, like the mm-hmm. kid is, he's 
you can't get the ball off him. He's like super comfortable. You could rip it at his knees. He'll still control it. Like mm-hmm. that's kind of what he wanted to get in us. Like just being comfortable in all situations. And plus like the grass we were training on across the street was terrible, <laughs> but that helps us when mm-hmm. you're working on your first touch, like not everything is going to be perfect grass mm-hmm. or perfect turf. So he kind of just was like, you got to deal with the conditions, you know, you got to be able to play in anything. So that was definitely beneficial in the long run. And too. your dad didn't play professionally at all. He played he played different sports. Uh, you know, he played some Irish sports, Gaelic football, he was yeah. very good at, handball. Um, but yeah, when he came over, he played like kind of like semi professional. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he he definitely was a good player. I remember going as a kid to watch some of his his games and he was definitely a very good player. Uh, holding midfielder as well, but yeah, I think he wanted he's more of a like a tough tackler, like mm-hmm. maybe not as technical, but he tried to instill hey, you got to tackle, you got to be tough, but mm-hmm. also let's be good on the ball as well. So I yeah. think that was a good, it's a good combination. Mm-hmm. And now he's coaching in uh, the NISA. He is. Yeah. So um, he's with the Savannah Clovers mm-hmm. in NISA and he's, this is his first time coaching men. So, you know, me and him, we talk twice, three times a week, just about his experience and how he's doing. And, you know, the, maybe the results haven't been necessarily there, but he's definitely been enjoying his experience learning, you know, what to do, what's not to do at that level. Cause he's been exceptional, like coaching the, the Gachi Academy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So this is, this is a big jump for him, but I'm very, very happy and very proud of him. Yeah. How did you get recruited to Siena? Um, was it through the, your Academy team? Yeah. So the good thing about my Academy team actually is that we were very good. Like <laughs> we would go to the showcases and like we, we went my, my last year we went undefeated up until the playoffs, which is crazy because we were beating all the MLS academies, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and, you know, we were kind of like a ragtag kind of group, but we have some guys that have went pro. Um, but, no, we were just just tough to be, and we could score at the other end. But, yeah, all the college coaches would go to the, the development academy showcases, so that's kind of how I got recruited. But a lot of my teammates got recruited to, like, these big schools, and, you know, I, I did well. I did well with Gachi, but I wasn't, you know, big, strong and mm-hmm. fast, kind of like what some schools are looking for. So mm-hmm. I think Siena was definitely a good fit for me, for sure. Did you have interest from uh, like other schools? A few, a few, but not big, like interest from like Army, Fairfield, just a few mm-hmm. of the smaller schools. But yeah, no, a lot of my teammates were, were able to commit to college. And that's honestly the goal of the academy, just yeah. to get kids placed into college. Mm hmm. And then, so, <clears throat> do you sign like your junior year, senior year? When when did you sign with uh, Sienna? Uh, the end of my junior year. I think okay. that's basically when most people try and sign, or mm-hmm. or the beginning of their senior year. So, yeah, it was the right timing for me. I thought, you know, they were offering a full scholarship, so I was like, wow, I, I have to take this. You yeah, know? that's pretty good. Yeah. And then, so you went to Sienna, and then you already kind of hinted at it already, but you said that like you lost all your confidence going there why and like when was it was it the first year or yeah so my first year um we did exceptionally well we made it to the playoffs we had a home playoff game first time ever mm-hmm. we ended up winning we get to the semifinals we play against Ryder University from New Jersey and we go into penalty kicks and i take the fourth one and i miss <laughs> and i miss and then they score the next one and they win the game and you know as a freshman like you know, I was one of the only freshmen that played like, but all I just, I felt like I just let everyone down mm-hmm. for sure. So as young, I was only 17 and just a young kid. I was like, wow, like I really just let, I felt like I let the whole school down. So that definitely like took a toll and it, I definitely didn't get over it for a while. Like it took, took a bit to get over it Cause it felt so serious in the moment, but looking back on it now, it's like, you know, things like that happen so many times in professional games, you know, one call, one PK, you know, it goes a different way. And it happens in the World Cup. Like, happens in the biggest stages of football. So, mm-hmm. you know, but when you're in the moment, it feels yeah. terrible. You and, know, and you, we talked about this before. Like, you always have said that you are really hard on yourself. <laughs> right. And like, extremely hard on yourself yes. with your mistakes. Right. To the point where you're staying up all night thinking about it. And every, every, I feel like every footballer who takes their game seriously, like, I will replay my game over and over. My mistakes that I did are like, why did I not just take one step this way? Why didn't I, yeah. why didn't I not just jump there? Whatever. Why did I not stay over the ball and, like, get it on frame? But, like, I feel like you are very, very hard on yourself with that. Yeah, I think I'm just always looking to improve. And, like, you know, I think it's gotten to a point where I've worked so hard 
that when things maybe don't go my way that I have to maybe reanalyze a little bit and just work on certain aspects, you know, even with the Birmingham game, like on the second one, maybe mm. trying like if I take one more step and it's like, Oh, maybe if I do one more ladder drill, you know, it's tough to think it's <laughs> yeah. tough to think that way, but it's like, you know, Mm-hmm. you want to do it as best as you can. You want to give your best effort. And that's just, you know, it comes in training, working hard every day and doing that extra 15, 20 minutes like we do every day. Mm-hmm. We'll add up. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that that mentality has hurt you more or helped you more in your career? I think it's definitely helped me more. I, I don't know. I don't know necessarily how it would hurt me too, too much. I think maybe I could have spent more time with like friends and family and stuff like that. I was just thinking of the fact of like you then taking it so seriously that it adds too much stress and then you get on the field and then all of a sudden now you're playing less confidently or like at co- in college when you were like in a yeah. dark place. I think ever since I've been to Hartford, I've been able to manage that a bit more. Uh-huh. Like I'll watch the games m- more logically yeah, rather than emotionally. I think in college, like when I'd mess up, I would look at the games more emotionally and, you know, then I get down on myself. But here it's like, if I make a mistake, it's like, all right, like, how can I fix it? Or, mm-hmm. you know, talk about it with teammates, you know, see how we can fix it as a group. So I think looking at it more logically is definitely a, a better thing for me personally. Yeah. I went with like a wave. Like I was like high school, senior year. It was just like, almost like what you described your brother. Like it just, not that you don't care, but you're just like, I'm just playing like so confident. I'm just going to play mm-hmm. like no big deal. Like I don't care about mistakes. Like I know I'll be able to succeed the next play. Mm-hmm. And then it peaked. And then as I was going and trying to join professional teams, I was faced with a lot of like adversity of like not making a team, right. getting cut, cut, cut. I started over analyzing, going into a trial, being like, I can't let this one slip through my hands. And right. too much pressure on myself up until like the first two years or so. And then, like, I realized it was negatively impacting my game. And then I kind of, like, learned to manage it better as, like, f- year four or five. For sure, yeah. And so it was, like, a weird dip at the beginning of my professional career. Right. So it was just, uh, it's just weird how it hits you. Um, but then, so, yeah, so you put, you know, you put a lot of pressure on yourself in college. You got, in, like, very down on yourself when you missed the penalty. And so yep. that was what kick-started, like, Kind of, time. yeah, because I'd done well all year. You know, I got, I made the all-rookie team, like, going into the playoffs – super confident and it kind of was just like a kick to the face kind of yeah. kind of back to reality like okay like you know what like you know it took a while but it's like all right i need to get back to work because you know mm-hmm. i was determined to get back to the playoffs the next year and then we didn't get there and then that only brought me down more mm-hmm. so it, it was definitely tough i felt like i had a lot of responsibility like to make up to the team for for missing the penalty and you know i, I wasn't living up to to my own expectations mm-hmm. and i think that's the hardest is when when you're doubling down on your work and training more and the results don't get come or you're not seeing the results you want and then you're like, I need to work harder. I add yeah. something's going and then you just dig yourself in a deeper and deeper hole. Yeah. Add yeah, more yeah, yeah, and more yeah. pressure on yourself and it just compounds and builds and builds and builds. Oh, it's a terrible feeling. It sucks. It's and then terrible. like it's it's hard because like the best way to get out of that is like just be like, Oh yeah, continue to do the work. You're gonna have your up years and down years, but just continue yeah. to do your work keep the same attitude, be a little bit more carefree on the mistakes and just focus on the next play, but keep working how you're working. And like, don't like I've, I, you know, you, you can keep on training and having the great same sessions, all the individual sessions and have the best year of your life right. and then do everything the same. And all of a sudden a couple things go wrong and your team's not doing well and yeah. you don't have the best. No, for sure. Like it's, 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 it's hard. Um, how did the next couple of years go? Like how did junior and senior year go? Junior year, was somehow worse than sophomore year. <laughs> <laughs> well, just same thing or why? In or terms of reason? stats, like stats wise, mm-hmm. just terrible. I was, and then again, I felt like I let the team down. And then at the end of the year, I was captain my, my sophomore and junior year. Mm-hmm. I got the captaincy stripped from me um, because the coach said, Hey, you need to stop worrying about everyone else. And you need to worry about yourself. And also you're going to be playing center forward. <laughs> so that was an interesting meeting. Uh, uh-huh. But definitely was a lot. I definitely didn't take it well. But that summer, you know, I was playing summer league mm-hmm. um, with FA Euro in Brooklyn. Just tried to, you know, kind of. Is that USL League 2? Or? League 2. Okay. Yeah, USL League 2. Uh, so, yeah, great, good group of guys there. But I just tried to, you know, better myself, better my game. Um, knowing that I was going to be playing center forward was a little jarring. Yeah. Especially because I was playing six the entire summer. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I kind of just went in with the right attitude senior year and scored a few goals and I made a all conference team, which was great. 
Um, but definitely wasn't enjoyable. We didn't make the playoffs and we underperformed as a team. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I'd much rather do super well as a team and not perform myself. Um, so it was tough because I felt like I put in the work, I I performed and, you know, we just, we didn't get the results that we wanted as a team. So that was, that, that sucked for Mm -hmm. sure. So four (laughs) years, so it was freshman year, your most successful year as a team then? Yeah. Yeah. And it just went down, down, down. It just went down, down, down. That that was tough because, you know, I felt mm-hmm. like I was putting work in and wasn't getting the results. So mm-hmm. in college, it's tough. You know, it's tough. It is tough. You get three months and it, so many little things can go wrong in that three months. Yeah. And for us, it was like if you lose two conference games, like you're out of the playoffs. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, two bad results. But overall, though, in college, like I'm guessing good group of guys. Did you enjoy your time at Siena? Like I had a fantastic time. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I still have five of the best friends. Like we all just, you know, are super chill. And Mm -hmm. my senior year, we lived, it was six of us in a house. And, you know, it was just a great time, a great social experience for sure. Great educational experience. But Mm -hmm. yeah, the soccer experience maybe wasn't, wasn't what I, wasn't what I wanted. Yeah. And, and. Um, this is really interesting because I get asked this so many times about if college is a good route for players. And I feel like you are the best person to ask this because you went the college route and then became a pro and your brother, he went straight to the MLS as a homegrown, right? Uh, yeah. 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 Um, so exact opposite paths pretty much both ended up playing professionally. What are your thoughts on the college soccer as a route to the professional game? Good, bad. Would you do it again? Like all that stuff. Um, as you know, college soccer is just completely different than, than the professional game. I think mm-hmm. it's much more physical. Um, you know, you can kind of make subs on the fly. At one point <laughs> there was overtime, <laughs> you know, like it's just, it's kind of, and you know, golden goal. Golden overtime. goal. So it's kind of it, like, it's in its own world, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not really indicative of the professional game, but you know, if you, even if you look at our team, guys come from everywhere, you know, mm-hmm. everyone has their own path. So for me, I mean, a college experience and college education, you know, can do you a long way because, you know, at the end of the day, soccer doesn't last forever. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. you know, you gotta be able to, you know, have the best career that you can and then, you know, ultimately move on to something different in life. And, you know, it's good to have an education to back you. So, you know, In my brother's case, you know, he backed himself completely. He decided to skip the college route and just go straight professional. But Mm -hmm. for me personally, I think a college education is is good to have. So, Mm -hmm. what's your brother want to do after he's done playing? I mean, he's nineteen; it's not right on his mind. (laughs) Have you talked to him about it? Uh, I've talked to a a bit about it. He says he wants to do nothing, so that's a problem. (laughs) That is a big problem. If he he keeps on going like he's going, maybe he maybe he doesn't have to, but. You know, me and him, we've, we've always, like, talked about opening, like, a facility or something like that to mm-hmm. do, like, private and group training and stuff like that. You know, those cool facilities you see, that, you know, turf fields and just do it nice. Like, do it very well. Mm-hmm. So, that's what I think. In we, Queens? Kind of where, wherever we end up, you know. Mm-hmm. We, it doesn't have to be. Because it's super expensive yeah. in Queens, you know. So, like, yeah. In New York, it's it's maybe not viable, but somewhere else somewhere yeah. else to to do it right but yeah i my parents have been on him about getting his education online because the mls offers a program yeah. where he can get his education for free but you know right now he's solely focused on soccer so i i get that i get that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah i mean that's what i tell kids that ask that question i'm like look like most kids their full goal is like to play professionally mm. and that's you know how i was that's how you, probably you were as well right but a lot of times like when you're 16 17 18 those professional routes aren't just popping up like that yeah and if they're not popping up it's like that's where college soccer i think is so good oh it's perfect you get yeah. four years especially for you and I, I said i was a late bloomer but you even more of a late bloomer um but for kids who are not at their physical peak to play with men at 16 17 18 years old I mean, it's perfect to get another four years of developing. I'm sure you developed a ton at Siena. For sure. And then you can have another chance. Even if if you're ready in a year, you can drop out and go. Oh, for sure. But it's like, I think it's just so great for the kids who aren't ready at 16, 17, 18 with professional teams wanting to sign them. Try it. Give it a go. Four years later, you can reevaluate and go for the pro game after that. Yeah. Like the thing is like, like I said, like all my childhood I was working technical, 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 right? And then you get to college, it's a different game, yeah. different, like you're in the weight room four or five times a week. You guys were lifting four or five times? I it, thought we were doing three times a week. And yeah. I thought that was crazy. So, you know, I needed that. Yeah. As, as weird as it sounds, you know, Yeah. Um, 
you know, and then you just, you're surrounded by food, basically. You know, mm -hmm. you have these dining halls where you just go and you kind of eat whatever. And, you know, no one, you don't have your parents watching what you're eating. So you're kind of on your own, but you're just surrounded by food and weights, you know. <laughs> so you're going to develop, you know, like, <laughs> like uh, that's just the way it is. Like, yeah. you just, you develop a different side of your game, a more physical side of your mm -hmm. game. So I felt like that was what I kind of was lacking. Mm -hmm. You know, it was funny. I was the exact opposite boat. Like, even though I was a late bloomer, I really had like a big junior, senior year, freshman year of college of like developing. Right. And then, but still like, I was always like faster, more athletic, like just run, go. So the college game was perfect for me. Like I, <laughs> you're making the face. I'm still, hey, 30 years old, I can still move pretty well. Uh-huh. <laughs> but like I, at that time, like I had, my technical ability was not good. Mm. Like with I know you're surprised. <laughs> no. Shut up, I beat you in two touch today. But it, like I, at that age, like I needed just to work with the ball. Right. What was good is like I was surrounded with a really good group of guys who right. realized that like, look, just how we described earlier, the team training sessions at college and then going to the weight room is not going to be enough to, to go For play sure. pro. Yeah. So we would, four or five of us would literally go hop the fence at UC Davis. We had a, stole a key and opened up the little lock for the balls and the okay, little stuff. That's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> we would just take the balls and just do technical sessions for like mm. 45 minutes to an hour and a half just technical with the ball like all the stuff that you probably did with your dad and yeah. your brother we were just doing that like every single night every single evening and like that's what i really needed for those four years which right. is funny because college is where i really developed technically which yeah, most people was, don't say no for me it was the complete opposite mm. like you still do like we had uh one of those uh, those handball courts yeah and just playing off yes. the wall working on your passing i think like that is like you know it was just a resource that was just there and you know you just all you need is a ball and mm -hmm. the wall and Did you go by yourself or you go with friends i that? go by myself yeah yeah i felt like you know it, it was just good alone time like you get away from your classes and mm -hmm. stuff like that it's just good to to just do that for 30 40 minutes and just have fun with Bro, it it's a workout too it is yeah you're like dripping in sweat after that for sure it's a great workout but you're getting so many touches that's the thing that 30 it's... minutes of that you're getting four or five thousand touches for sure like it's insane yeah. and it's just like t cutting turning juggling taking the ball in the air like doing everything it's just it's crazy and like anybody that wants to work on their first touch passing like technical ability just go to the wall and like you don't even have, need to have a plan shut up <laughs> you, don't even, you don't even need to have a plan you just right. just kick the ball and just react to it mm -hmm. like that's that's one of the best things you can do um okay so then so sienna you really developed four years developed physically right became an athlete even though you're you didn't have the best um seasons collectively as a team mm. um you graduated I did graduate. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah. You talk, tell me about how I haven't graduated pretty much every single week. Right. Um, Naturally. It'll come. It'll come. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> but uh, from then, walk me through graduating from Siena and then what your next steps were after that. So, um, uh, yeah. So, obviously, our season ended. Uh, my senior season uh, usually ends in around, like, November. Yeah. Right? So... My brother at that point was training with, you know, the union a little bit and seeing his path there. And I was kind of stuck. Winter in Albany is cold, you know, whatever. So didn't really have any opportunities. But then I got uh, an invite to the New York Red Bulls combine. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that was as weird as it sounds. It was like a one or two day thing, but it definitely changed my perspective on on what I can and can't do. Cause I was there with basically the top college players, like in the area on the East uh -huh. coast. So, um, and some of those guys went on to get drafted, I think. So yeah. basically like it, it put my mind more at ease. Like, yeah, like, you know, I could play against these guys. Like, you know, I'm not from the best team, maybe in the best conference, but you know, these guys who are at, you know, Duke and Clem and like all these schools, like you know, I can compete, like I can hold my own. So that was definitely reassuring. And then, um, about like a week and a half later, I got a call from my brother's agent mm -hmm. actually. And he's like, Hey, like, I don't really know much about this club. I don't know too, too much, but, uh, this club Hartford athletic are having an open tryout. We think maybe, you know, if you're around, why not, you know, take the drive. It's only two hours. Just see how you do. So mm -hmm. I paid the $175 and went down there and definitely a jarring experience. Cause when I got there, there was like 130 people. Yeah. I was like, man, oh man. Um, so I was like, wow, there's there's no shot. It's like mm -hmm. 10 degrees out. Yeah. You know, the, the coach was there at the time. It was Roddy Jaidi, um, just came from England. So with Southampton's U23s. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he was high level Prem player as well, you know. So he, he was overseeing everything. And, you know, I got there, I 
sign in or whatever and i i didn't get to play for the first hour because there was just so many people there just on that it was just one field it was two fields and i still didn't get to play for the first (laughs) hour i'm freezing Uh i honestly was just like thinking about going home because like at that point i'm like wow like i what what do i have to show you know maybe i'll play for like 30 40 minutes tops but i actually got in one of the short side of game and i chipped the goalie from like half field and then roddy started watching me play a bit and then they kind of split up two 11 v 11 games based on level Mm -hmm. and i kind of did well there and we had a conversation after and and then they're like so i just assumed that if you do well there you just go to preseason yeah no 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 (laughs) There's an invitational tryout. There's levels. So then they go, yeah, you and this one other kid, Alfonso, come to the invitational tryout and see how you do. So went to the invitational tryout. The top college guys there. I'm like, oh, come on, man. Uh, so I didn't even think I did particularly well, to be mm-hmm. honest. Like I tried my best. And, and the head coach, actually, he was having some problems getting into the country at that time. Uh-huh. He was away, so he was watching it over like Zoom. <laughs> but um, I waited a few days, and I got a call to preseason. So mm-hmm. yeah, it was kind of crazy. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> I mean, I always think about those those stories about how players sign their first pro contract or even getting the pro level, like how so many things like went right, and also like the little decisions that you make that led you to Hartford. Like, yeah. Imagine like what would have what would Connor McGlynn be doing if he would have just turned around and said, "I'm going to go home" after an hour of the open tryout. I don't know. Probably starting like a YouTube page or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's just so interesting to think about. But yeah, I mean, that's that's awesome. And I mean, it, it's not fun to go to those open tryouts. It's not fun to go, no. go to those invitational con- combines. Still waiting for my money back. <laughs> yeah, and That's in the next contract. You yeah, gotta, maybe. You got to negotiate that $175 yeah, back. Yeah, listen, I mean, it was the best $175 I've ever spent in my Paid life. Paid off. Good investment. But yeah. what's, what's so like... What I liked too, what you said was like, even going back all the way to the New York Red Bulls combine is like, you saw the level right there of the top collegiate players there. And you said, yeah, I can hang, I can handle this level. And it gives you confidence going forward. Yeah. And like, that was exactly what playing at USL league two with the, uh, San Jose earthquakes U 23 team did for me. Mm -hmm. Like I went in there originally, like if I can just make this team, like I'm going to be so happy. Right. And all of a sudden I was starting and playing well. And I'm like, wow, I'm going, I'm starting over guys at Cal or starting over guys mm-hmm. and playing with guys at Stanford and doing all this. These guys are, all got drafted or, you right. know, and I'm like looking at that. I'm like, wow, if they can do it, I was on their team succeeding with them. Mm-hmm. I can do it too. For sure. And like that opened up my eyes. Like I should really try to go pro. And that's why it gave me the confidence to drop out of, of school after my senior year, because I was like, all these guys that I was playing with and, and, and doing well with, and I thought I was right at the level there, they're signing big contracts right so that it's like the same exact thing it's like seeing that level and comparing yourself is huge yeah and then and then we got to preseason that like this is a part of the story that not many people know even including the coaching staff at the time Uh is that i was still in school like i still had a (laughs) semester left Uh you know not many people realize that you still got to graduate in may or whatever But, but so your mindset going to these tryouts and stuff like since you were still in school you 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 weren't fully invested in going pro then no it was just like oh i'll see how this goes it was a kind of like yeah it was kind of shot in the dark like i'll see how it goes um but then i got the call to preseason like and you were fully expecting to it not to work out and then to go back to school on the next kind of as bad as it sounds Yeah. yeah like but my mom and and, last time i'm gonna interrupt you and then you can go talk. for it go i'm sorry for it. i'm yeah. sorry i'm just i'm just curious about it so if it wouldn't have worked out you would have gone back to school on monday mm-hmm. and just finished out the the semester and then graduated and yeah and done that mm-hmm. okay That's yeah interesting interesting Tough do you think, think that was the right decision that was I said the last time. <laughs> this is the last time do you think that was the right decision or do you think you would have gone back to yourself making that decision and be like look go in head you know head first dive in or do you think it was right to kind of still be in school? Uh, I started to regret the school thing when it got, especially the preseason time, because, you know, my school was two hours away. So, and I also like, when I got invited to preseason, you know, I, I didn't have housing in Hartford. I was lucky enough that some of the guys on the team were super nice, like mm-hmm. let me have one of the rooms and so just a place to stay. But they were kind of the only ones who knew that I was going back and forth every day. So, and I had a professor at Siena. I only needed three or f- six more credits. 
she was helping me out, staying super late at night so I can go to class. So my typical day at that point, it was I was up at five. I would drive the two hours for training. We, it was preseason, so there were some double sessions. We would train at nine, take a little break, and then train usually around like two or three. I'd drive back to Siena two hours for a class from six to eight thirty, just an individual with the professor, <laughs> um, just to get all my work done. Um, uh-huh. but she was super patient with me. Like I, you know, she didn't even know much about soccer, but I told her, I'm like, listen, like I'm taking this very seriously. Like, you know, I think that was the point where I'm like, wow, like, I, I can really do this. Like mm-hmm. that's when I'm like, wow, you know, this is a real possibility. I can sign with this team. And I was doing that for about a, almost a month, which was the gas bill, man was crazy. <laughs> but you know, I was, I had the most supportive mom and dad, you know, they just said, just keep going, just keep going, you know, just, and the scary thing was, is there was a lot of trialists coming in, you mm-hmm. know, different guys coming in every day and, you know, people were getting cut each week. Mm-hmm. That was the worst meeting was like on like Friday or Saturday after we'd have a scrimmage, you know, you'd just have your individual meeting and they'd just be like, you know, yes or no mm-hmm. in terms of coming back for the yeah. next week. It's so not even like, yes, is in we'll sign you. It's like, yeah, come back on Monday. It's just, yeah, it wasn't like, oh, we're going to offer you a contract. It's yeah. yeah, yeah, you can keep training with us. Yep, yep. So it was definitely scary every week because I was seeing my friends just like <laughs> leaving. It's like, what happened to them? <laughs> the meeting didn't go well, you know? So um, that's where I like, you know, there was definitely a fire in me. I just, you know, the fact that these days were so long, like I was like, wow, like I really, really want this. Like I love the guys on the team. Mm-hmm. I love the environment first mm-hmm. of all, because, you know, the jump was crazy. It mm-hmm. took an adjustment to, mm-hmm. to get used to that speed of play. So um, yeah, definitely a crazy time. Very thankful for the professor who, you know. Yeah, that's an unreal. Like who, that she who, would stay there just for you yeah. to do that. Yeah. Like not getting paid any extra. Not like, getting paid extra. She she had a kid and she would be like, yeah, like, listen, like we can do the labs. Like we, we can make it work. And, you know, it was definitely long days because, you know, I told you before I was going home to a house with six guys. Yeah. And mind you, we were in college. So <laughs> there was, I'd get home some nights, there was blaring parties yeah. at our house. So imagine like you're getting home, you have a class from like six to nine mm-hmm. and then there's a party at your house and you were trying to sleep and you have to get up at 5 a.m. For the next preseason. Day for for preseason where you could potentially get cut. Yeah. So it was definitely nerve wracking, but you know, it, I think it just showed me how much I really wanted it. Mm-hmm. So it was mm-hmm. great. And especially too, I mean, the payoff, it's not like you're working for this for a million dollar contract. No. It's it's the USL contract, especially coming in four years ago, five years ago as a rookie was very small. And you're doing this literally just because you love the game and you are dreaming about being a pro. Right. And so like all this, like everything you go through, the driving two hours, the staying after to do the, to, to do the extra um, full labs with your teacher, missing out on parties with your friends and literally just be like, I need to go to sleep and because I got this tomorrow. Like it's just so crazy like the grind that you go for in order to get to here. And yeah. it's like, it's, you know, it's a, it's a USL contract. It's, it's literally all the player. I love it here. Cause the, I mean, obviously I want to go higher, right. but all the players are just so they love what they're doing. Cause if they didn't love it, they'd go do something else. Oh, for sure. No, it was, it, it seemed bonkers to me and it definitely seemed bonkers to my friends because it's like, you know, you're at that point, it's like second semester, your last semester, senior year, mm-hmm. you know, I missed out on a senior trip to Miami. Mm-hmm. that you know sucked <laughs> but you know um mm-hmm. you're missing out on all these social experiences you know it's like all right the season's over now it's like all right time to enjoy our mm-hmm. last semester together and i missed out on a lot of that but um you know i have very supportive friends as well mm-hmm. you know that you know backed me the entire way you know they'd be partying but they'd be like yo kill it tomorrow keep practice doing you. <laughs> keep doing it like you're gonna get that contract like keep believing mm-hmm. it. so i'm very thankful for those guys as well yeah no it's so important though with like the people that you surround yourself mm-hmm. like at those times yeah. because if you had a friend group of five six guys that you're living with they were like connor like what the what the hell bro why are you doing this like mm-hmm. hey, come hang out with us it's so stupid making fun of you and i'm sure they tease you but it's like oh yeah we're jealous about your situation that's awesome keep doing it but they're still gonna make fun of you for going to bed oh at for sure yeah but like there <laughs> you can feel that it's a supportive teasing or whatever versus like you know actually being like toxic and like really like hating on you for doing it and the people that you surround yourself during those times it's so important because like it, it can sway you not like convince you but it can sway you in one direction or another yeah you know and like my college is the same thing the group of guys was all like keep training keep working hard keep going for mm-hmm. it we're all gonna sign pro it's, yeah. yeah that's it because like yeah like if like yeah if i take like 
even just one practice because you know you're not guaranteed a contract and i show up hung over to the yeah. practice and then like i get cut like i would look back on that and be like wow like you know this isn't worth it at all but mm-hmm. no i had a supportive friend group like they would do their thing they would have fun but they'd make sure like you know i stayed on top of my mm-hmm. own things and, and again, it's kind of like that type one versus type two fun. Mm-hmm. Like that's very, I hope I'm going to get this right, but I think it's type two. Like what you're going through was very type two. Cause right. I would look at, and I had the same weird story of, I was commuting five, six hours from when I was living in Sacramento mm-hmm. training with the Republic. I was commuting six hours every weekend down to LA to play with the USL two um, affiliate team. Wow. And then I would play the game and I, at nine o'clock at night, drive six hours back up to Sacramento, sleep in and then, be in Sacramento for the training the next Monday. Jesus. And like, I was doing that every single weekend. And then I was still in in school and classes and I was just, I was just failing out of classes. Yeah. Like just impossible. Yeah. Um, But like, yeah, but I look back at that time as like, it's like a weird, like nostalgia of like, that was really enjoyable. Mm -hmm. But like in the moment, I'm like, this sucks. Right. Yeah. Those are the moments that, that make you mentally tougher to be fair. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I mean, if you can get through that stuff, I feel like you can get through basically anything. But now that like you're here and you're playing and you're at a club that you really enjoy playing for, I think all mm-hmm. that work just made it super worth it. Yeah, but Sacramento, they reimbursed my gas mileage. Hartford <laughs> did not. But in fairness, I didn't tell them because yeah, 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 I yeah. did not... <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> I did not tell the staff because I didn't want them to know that I was like 50-50 yeah. about, you know... I wanted to show that I was super serious about making the team yes. and I, that my full focus was making the team. I think that's smart. Um, I told a few staff members after what I was doing and mm-hmm. I think some of them kind of figured it out because mm-hmm. um, I was getting the facility like super early and like, I was like, yeah, it was a nice drive today. You know, there's no traffic. <laughs> it only took me an hour and 45. <laughs> yeah. So, but no, it, it was definitely worth it um, for sure. So, yeah, yeah. And, and I think it is different though in our situations because they literally told me like, yeah, you can train with us, but you need to play with this team in LA. Mm-hmm. And you were, oh, wow, yeah. yeah. So you were like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm trying to still juggle both. But you did. You ended up signing your professional I contract did. with Hartford. I did. How did that go? What was, did they call in your office and you thought it was another meeting or how'd it go? I just thought, yeah, I was, I thought it was another meeting and they, I think they, they made their last cuts or whatever. Um, and is this still in preseason <clears throat> or are we in season now? It was like a week before the season was about to start. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, so I signed my first contract. Like, parents were super proud. Um, my brother just signed the week before, so it was definitely mm-hmm. a good, like, two weeks for us. It was super nice. And and we knew we were going to be playing against each other eventually. Because really? he was on Philly, too, okay, at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, we knew, like, we were in the same conference as well. And then um, we were scheduled to play Red Bulls, too, the first game at, at Red Bull Arena. I got into the starting 11 that game. All of a sudden, COVID. <sighs> COVID. Oh, this is 2020? <laughs> we were getting on the bus, uh-huh. and we were literally, like, about to leave. And then someone goes, hey, like, this it's canceled. Like, all the games are canceled. Like, And then we were off for a few months. <laughs> yeah. I, thought- so I was going to play my first professional game, and... Yeah, I kind of got kind of got ruined. I thought that was 2019 <laughs> that you signed your first pro contract. That's 2020. 2020. Damn. COVID year. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I can't even imagine. I had so <laughs> much anxiety and like and good excitedness and nerves and everything about that first my first professional game. Um, I can't even imagine that being delayed like that. Right. Like especially the day of because you're so close. Like yeah. you're about ready to do that. Like if I'm being honest, I. You know, I worked really hard that preseason. I, I think I definitely earned my my spot and respect from a lot of the guys on the team. But I don't think my game was ready, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Like, you know, we played a few preseason games, but I still think I needed to to pick my speed of play up. Like, mm-hmm. I think I still had, like, a lot, a lot to work on. So I think those months at home uh, training with, you know, my dad and my brother, like, mm-hmm. just working on our weaknesses, because we had a whole preseason to see kind of what we needed to work on, what yeah. we needed to adjust, because this was a different level, especially for me. My brother was, you know, kind of in that environment. But for me, like, this was a whole different ball game. So mm. those months at home definitely helped. And you said that, like, the speed of play was the biggest yeah. adjustment <laughs> period or adjustment yeah. thing that you had to adjust to. Mm-hmm. Um, like, in what ways? Was that just literally just being in the center of the field and being pressed quicker, like having to make decisions quicker, playing less touches. Like what was specifically about the speed of play that you needed to adjust to? Yeah, I think it's just like, 
you know, things I was doing in college, like, you know, I would do this like weird rollback thing that sometimes I do to like, and then switch the field. Like, you know, professional players, like they'll jump on that. Like mm-hmm. they'll see it and they'll jump on it. So, you know, you can get away with certain things in college. I think at the professional level, like good players will punish you for doing, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. And just being like technically clean all the time, because as you see, like one errant pass then leads to the press and then usually leads to a chance for them somehow. But mm-hmm. in college, sometimes you can get away with certain things like that. But at the prof- professional level, like everyone's good. So, yeah. you know, they'll take advantage of stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had the same <laughs> thing. Like for me, it was the speed of play as well. Um, specifically like tighter space rondos and fewer right. touches. Cause in college I was just like, get the ball. Oh, have a sloppy touch, but you know, it's okay. Yeah. Get under, under control and then go out a guy. Right. And like if, if the pro game, you have a sloppy touch. Boom. Tulu, <laughs> Tulu's coming in to clean Tulu's you out. Tulu's killing you. <laughs> Robin, Tulu. Robin's coming in and two-footing you. Robin's already killed you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that, I just needed to adjust to that and be like, if your first touch isn't perfect, you're going to get wiped out. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And, like, and just everything. Oh, if you take an extra touch here, you're going to lose the ball and your whole team's going to yell at you versus in college. It's like, it's just expected. Oh, yeah, you're going to probably lose the ball there. Yeah. No, it's no, no I mean, because at this level, like, it, this is our job. Yeah. So when we can see the goal, like, it is personal. Mm-hmm. You know, like, at the end mm-hmm. of it, like, this is our livelihood. Like, you know, you score goals, you get paid, like, you know, clean sheets, you get paid. So it's super duper important to, to be clean in everything you do and just give your best. Mm-hmm. And and I love that too, for COVID, you went back home. Went back you home. You and your brother went back home and you guys just took advantage of the time to train, 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 train. Yeah. Because there's so many players that didn't do that and they took it as like a three month vacation pretty no, much. No, it definitely wasn't a vacation for us. You know, we definitely saw what we needed to work on. My dad, and my, my mom would come to the sessions too and just watch us kind of improve in certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, what did those sessions look like? Same as when you guys were pretty kids? similar. Yeah, yeah, pretty similar. More one v ones because my brother, he's not the best. I'd say one v one player mm-hmm. attacking, and I think that's what he needed to to work on. So we did a lot of one v ones because I'm more defensive. Mm-hmm. So I was helping him with that, and then for me, just to get technically better. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I mean, that's that's a pretty cool situation to go back and and have a professional training partner like yeah. to be able to do that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, because technically, like in New in New York, COVID was crazy. Like yeah. technically, we weren't even allowed outside, <laughs> but we didn't care. Yeah, as yeah. bad as it sounds, like, I know. Obviously, COVID was super serious, and yes. like, but you know, we at the end, of it, it's a, this is our job to improve, and you know, and when we came back, I thought we were more prepared than most. Do you get yelled at anytime you're out in the park by people or or cops or anything? No, because we went, we would have a, like, we made sure we stayed socially distant. So like we were like in the middle of like a big grassy area, Mm -hmm. you know, not really disturbing anyone or around anyone. So people were fine with it. Yeah. I had a, like, I didn't have any, I mean, cause in the rule, I think in Oklahoma was pretty relaxed. If you could imagine on, on COVID (laughs) compared to New York or other places, but still it was like, there are people that were taking it, taking it really seriously, which they should, cause it was a serious thing. I'm digging myself a hole here. But anyway, so like I, I went out and I remember like um, training with a couple guys, which you weren't supposed to do. Mm-hmm. In Oakland. It was only supposed to be if in your house you could be with. Right. But you can't go outside of your house with other people. But we had a group of like four or five of us playing like a rondo or p- passing patterns at this huge field. And this lady came up and like walked all the way across the field to us. Just took down her guys. mask to yell at us about not socially distancing. Oh, no. And I was like, okay, like you're coming yeah close you're here to now us. <laughs> you're here now yeah you're the one making this dangerous for you if right. you don't like it you can leave like all us four are okay with it mm-hmm. you know it's just it was just a wild time but it like again it was hard it's like you have to find that balance of like t- pushing the rules in order to improve because like it is your job like this is yeah. like how we make money is being yeah. good and being fit i can't just stay at home in my apartment or else i'm i'll be, I'll be retired yeah it was a really weird time it was crazy but it's good, I mean, that you took advantage of it, you improved, and then when you came back, how was the speed of play? I felt good. That's I good. Felt, I felt a lot better. Like, you know, like when you're coming from the college level to a professional level, you know, maybe you don't feel the most confident at first, but, you know, after working and working, I felt really confident going into kind of like that second preseason, that yeah. weird thing that we had yeah. where it was like a two-week thing and then you play games. Um, I felt good going into that. And when then we had our first game against Red Bulls, I felt like I was a lot more prepared for that one. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. How did your first game go? Good. We won. We uh-huh. won. I played the full 90. I thought it had a good performance. Um, but yeah, uh, it was a crazy season because we only had like 16 games, I believe. And yeah. we were in those like those conferences of four or five teams. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was good. We got to play Philly um, 
four times. So you play against your brother a few times. Yeah, you I guys, think you guys trade kits and do the full photo and everything. Oh, we did the photo, not the trade kits, because we gotta pay for those. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> you traded kits, took the photo, and traded back. Can please give that back. It's Fifty dollars right there. Um, no, so uh, during the middle of the season, I sustained a knee injury. Um, so I only got to really play against him twice, but like the mm-hmm. one time where we started on the field together was, was crazy. And my parents have a funny video of us. Like, I completely cleaned him out. Really? I didn't even go for the ball. The ball was 15 yards past and <laughs> I just cleaned him out. I got a yellow card, <laughs> but he also scored against us once, which wasn't great. Yeah. Yeah. But then I also scored against them, but it got called back because <laughs> one of our players trucked the goalie. Uh-huh. So that, but yeah, it was a goal. It looked good. Yeah. But yeah, he scored against, he scored a nice goal against us too, which was annoying. Then he did the Mbappe celebration. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> yeah, that, that sucked. And That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I mean, that's so awesome to be able to play against your brother like that. At the uh... It was super weird because sometimes you want to pass him the ball. Like you're so <laughs> used to passing him the ball yeah. that you look at him and it's just like, okay, like I can hold you off because you're a little smaller than me. But <laughs> no, nah, he, he played well every time we played him. So that's that's really cool. It, was it weird having your first year at the professional game like with no fans? Like because you're usually everybody imagines being a pro and the first thing they think about is in the uh, stadiums and the fans. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to like, come at Siena like that because it was a great school I had a great time but we didn't get many fans so I was kind of like used to that (laughs) it was mostly like parents and stuff that would come to the games Uh uh you know because the thing about Siena is like we, we didn't have lights um, so we couldn't play at night. Yeah. So a lot of our games were like during the day at like two or three o'clock, but people are in class, you know, so <laughs> yeah. getting people out to a game was definitely tough. Um, so I was kind of like used to kind of playing in the quiet, <laughs> <laughs> just in your own, you know, you hear <laughs> hearing, hearing your mom up in the stands, you hear your, my mom, you know, cheering us on or the coach. Yeah. Was, yeah so, and then how did, uh, so that was 2020. Um, you've been now, you have just been on one year deals pretty much. So you just yeah. resigned, resigned, resigned. And mm-hmm. th- is this your fourth or fifth year? This is my fourth year fourth here year. in Hartford. So how did the last two seasons go after COVID year? Crazy. Yeah, definitely. You know, like any season ups and downs. Um, yeah, my second year, uh, I didn't know what to really expect coming in. There was a new coach, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's tough when a new coach comes in and maybe he didn't bring you there, you know? So I didn't know I had to prove myself mm-hmm. uh right away I, I think i was able to do that kind of towards like the end of preseason um then get my sp- starting spot and you know i was lucky enough to score a few few goals and you know a few nice goals a few nice goals yeah few nice goals um, what was your favorite goal that you scored oh i mean probably the long one the, the one from past half field that's insane not even because of the shot but it's because of the result i mean we won 7-0 against practically red bulls his first team yeah and also, it was the only game where my entire family was there. It was like my mom, my dad. Oh, they were there? And my brother was there, which was crazy because, you know, he had his games and stuff. But yeah. he surprised me that day, and he was able to come to the game. I just looked in the, the crowd, and he was there. I was like, there's no way. So <laughs> definitely a special game, you know. It was mm-hmm. I mean, it was a crazy goal, to be fair. Um, there's nothing better than scoring in front of your family. Like, it was crazy. I mean, it was like I they were... And the thing is, I think we got dominated in terms of possession <laughs> and everything. But it was just one of those games where, like, every shot we had won in the goal. Yeah. So, you know, like, you have one of those games maybe, like, once or twice a season. But um, it was cool that they got to see that one. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. So, yeah, the long goal. That, I, you, and you've had, what is it, one or two or three? How many goals of yours have been on, like, the Sports Center top ten? Uh, two. Two goals. Two goals, yeah. That's a pretty good uh, my very fir- accolade. Yeah, my very first one. Uh, was on, was number five, and then the long one was number two. Mm-hmm. You can't get to number one. Well, the number one, it was, she broke. It was a lady who broke the hundred meter dash. Ah, that'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, but I kicked it farther. <laughs> <laughs> and then so after the so every year, pretty much, you've gone into the office of the coach at the end of the season and been basically with a new coach yeah wondering if you're, they're gonna bring you back or if they're gonna wipe the slate clean it's a scary meeting for sure and yeah. you know sometimes like you don't know like maybe you think you did really well and, and here in hartford i've just tried to like you know be myself and um uh, like around the locker room and then just give my best every day in training um i really think that's all i can really ask of myself um but yeah, it's definitely a nerve wracking meeting for sure because, you know, you don't know if the coach is going to stay or go, you know, since I've been to Hartford, I've had a few different coaches. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's been, it's been crazy. Yeah. And then, uh, how has the start of this year been 
been for you again? There's new coach Tab Ramos coming in. New coach, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think maybe I had particularly the best preseason to be honest. I, I think I had to work my way in. Um, you know, maybe I was a bit down at times to be honest. Uh, that I wasn't playing, but you know, um, uh, I kind of broke my way into the starting eleven, and you know, now I'm kind of here. I'm playing a little out of position, but it, it's a position that I'm still getting used to. Um, but I'm definitely enjoying playing and just, you know, trying my best. Mm -hmm. I think you do really well at center back too. I mean, I've played center back and I like, it's, it's a tough position. Yeah. It's a tough position. It is tough. It's mentally tough. It's, you have to be super sharp. Every, you have that in the back of your head, the goal's right there. I'm like the last guy here. Can't mess up. You can't mess up. You can't mess up. Especially like you said, at the professional game, one little bad touch, one bad pass, one whatever, it's going to lead to a chance. Yeah. And at this level, that chance is is more often than not going to be a goal. Mm -hmm. So it's It's a very, it's hard to play very confidently back there, especially when you're playing out of position. That's not your normal spot. Yeah. But I think you're doing doing really well. Yeah. I think, I think tabs definitely instilled confidence in me, uh, back there and, and, anywhere I've been basically playing at the six or back there. So I think it's been going pretty well. I feel a lot more confident than I did a few weeks ago, to be honest. Mm-hmm. That's good. And then body feels good. Everything's good. Oh, it's destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it feels good. It feels good. You know, we definitely, I mean, we have a big game this weekend, but yeah, yeah, no, I feel good uh, for sure. They take good care of us. Yeah. Yeah. It's just your ego's bruised from losing a two touch every single time against me. Ooh. And this no. is what I got to tell the people. That if people are listening to this, we play two touch and it's Connor, Antoine, Robin, and me. And the three of them lollipop the ball up, just <laughs> easily play the ball up to each other to, to have the perfect set for one person to stitch me. And then I'd handle it, I'd deal with it, I play it over, and then they take a few times and just pop it up, pop it up, pop it up. Okay, you guys ready? Everybody's ready? Okay, the next one, Antoine fired in at Matt mm-hmm. Sheldon. Yeah. And for anyone who is watching or listening, it- you can tell by watching his stuff. There's no surprise why we do that, right? <laughs> it's, there's no shock here. Like you go after the best. That's, that's what happens. It's fine. Yeah, it's that, fine. I've that, learned. That's I've, it. I've learned to accept it. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, that's good. So we're we got Memphis this weekend. Mm-hmm. Big game. Big game. Very good team. They are very good. Yeah. Um. But yeah, anything in in season that you do, um, just to keep your body fresh and and ready. Um, I think it's good, you know, guys, some of the guys laugh, but I do, I do have a little routine, you know, mm-hmm. uh, we go to this place called the JCC. Uh, yeah. So I stretch, you know, I go in the hot tub pool and then sauna or steam room, I think is kind of the routine that's, that's worked best for me. You know, I, I think every player has their own little mm-hmm. recovery routine. It's kind of like what works for you. Yeah. I know you talk about the JCC every single day. So I, love I, the J- I wanted to give you a chance to plug the JCC. <laughs> I love the JCC. I love it. Every day. Hey, anybody go to the JCC? Matt, JCC? No, no. I got to go back. I got a wife and kid. I got to go back home. We're family. Though. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I should prioritize yeah, yeah. you. Um, but awesome. So uh, I have a few questions now to wrap, wrap up the uh, the podcast. Okay. Um, one, what has been the all-time best moment of your career? Wow. Oh, that's tough. I'd probably say signing the dotted line for the first pro contract. That's like you one. said, it wasn't for millions and millions of dollars, but I think it just showed like, you know, like I said, like from five years old, it's like something I wanted, fell out of love with it, then grew back in love with it. It kind of all came to fruition. And it was like, you know, it was a club that took a chance on me. So I was very grateful for that. You know, just an open trialist kind of, mm. you know, didn't really know what to expect from me. And the fact that they took a chance on me, I'm very grateful for it. So that was definitely my best moment. What was your feeling like once you signed it? And you're like, I'm a pro. I'm a pro footballer. My brother just signed last week. What was like the emotions that you had? Was it like extremely excited, nervousness, uh, like a, a release of like a, a, of stress? Like what were you feeling? I'm going to be honest. I cried on the way home. Yeah, there you I go. I cried. I did cry of, of like, it was, it was joy. It was just everything. Like everything kind of just came up. I couldn't believe it. You know, I called my parents. Like, you know, my mom has been super supportive, like, <laughs> since birth you mm-hmm, know like mm-hmm. she's she's been my rock and then my dad who's sacrificed so much came here trained us and like you know that moment was really special so it kind of all just came up yeah, yeah. Uh, cry baby I'm yeah basically <laughs> yeah, yeah no i did the same you know it's funny as my first contract i wasn't as emotional about it was 
more of like a like an exhaustive like oh my god like finally because it took me so it took me a year and a half yeah of trials and right. so when it finally happened i'm like like fuck thank god like this finally happened and i was obviously very excited yeah but it was the uh contract after i like had the surgeries i had to drop down into semi-pro new zealand and then i came back and i was like you know especially with youtube everybody was in the comment section oh you'll never play pro again all that and then it was signing that contract with the tulsa roughnecks was the one where i like broke me down i was like crying afterwards yeah no it really does do like it's amazing what a piece of paper can do yeah it is crazy but mm -hmm. no it kind of just all came to fruition for me so that that was definitely my best moment and what was the best moment on the field on the fields uh Whew. probably uh, my first goal was definitely special because we were able to to clinch first place i think after that game in our mm. group so i mean just you know um i came back from injury like i had a knee injury came back and was able to score that goal and and help the team that took a chance on me i think like it was definitely special so i think on the field that was a special we were on the road it was COVID and we had fans in the, the garage cheering us on uh -huh. at the, the Red Bulls field. So it was, it was a crazy moment for sure. It was like towards the end of the game, but being able to help the team get to that spot, I think was really special. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And then what was the uh, worst moment of your career? Oh, probably when Elvis Almo ran through my knee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you tell that story and then and, and explain how you guys yeah, are teammates so now? Yeah, so we played against Loudon, and Elvis Almo, who's currently our forward, ran through my knee, and I basically did my MCL. Uh, you know, I had to get stretched off, all that. Uh, whatever. He lived on. No, no regrets. <laughs> he said he said sorry. I I don't re I don't recall. <laughs> yeah, I'll, he'll be my next next guest. Yeah, and I'll ask him. Yeah, you should you should. <laughs> um, whatever we played we played against him against Colorado. I'm like, all right, this like I'm gonna smash this guy. Mm -hmm. Didn't get the opportunity to mm -hmm. missed out. Then all of a sudden I see the next year. You know I was lucky enough to to resign here. Elvis Almo signs for Hartford Athletic. My worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> now i see him and he is the nicest guy ever the and, nicest person and it kills me it kills me <laughs> it's, but it's he is it, a joy to be around yeah no he's a great guy um it's it's crazy and he kind of joked about it but it's crazy how like in a little tiny moment in a guy's life that's insignificant to his life you know just happen is like the worst moment of your career yeah you yeah know? like it's it's really crazy to think about that just like how little things work like that. And it's, I mean, that's injury. How long did it take you to recover? It was around like two and a half to three months. Um, and I was able to make it back for the last like two or three games. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, definitely like I, I chose not to get the surgery. I just decided, all right, I'm just going to rehab it. But yeah, you know, had his picture on the wall ready <laughs> <laughs> throwing darts at it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then he's like he signed for colorado i'm like this is perfect we play them this year then he he didn't start that game i was like come on man bring him on please <laughs> but you know didn't get the opportunity yeah that's fine i i've been with teammates where um i don't want to say names but one of a guy who i was with and playing with punched this guy in the face in the okay. game and, and i don't know if he got a red card or if the ref didn't see or something but literally punt like hated these guys hated each other okay so they signed to the same club different club next the next season okay and i signed for that club as well as we were we all kind of joined up again and then we were like a, a really good tight-knit group of friends and That's they, they were crazy. like joking about it like yeah this guy punched me in the face yeah no <laughs> i mean sometimes i mean like you know the usl like players kind of come and go yeah uh, a lot of teams change a lot each year so you kind of never know who you're going to play with next year mm -hmm. so we'll see that's funny and then uh final question okay. i'll let you go home um but if you could go back and need a time machine you can go back to your earlier life to young connor at any point in your life when would you go back and what piece of advice would you give younger connor Wow, that is a great question. I got questions, bro. I got questions. That's what I do. Um, and you could go back last year. You could go back yesterday. You could go back to the morning session and be like, hey, don't play two touch today with Matt Sheldon. He's going to kick your ass. Like, you could do whatever. No, whatever I definitely you want. want to go back to that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, probably when I was like 14, I'd say, because, mm -hmm. you know, I went to a national camp. I got cut. You know, I, I wasn't even near the level. 
but maybe like just looking back on it now, maybe just saying the things that I did need to work on. Um, and also listen to my dad more because, you know, sometimes like when your dad is training you or coaching you or whatever, you, you look at him more like, you know, oh, this is dad that's yelling at me and, you know, you know, he doesn't care, you know, but I should have listened to him a lot more. And I'm not saying I would be in a much better place, but the advice that he was giving me, I think a more mature me would have taken that on board a lot quicker. And I mm -hmm. think it would have been a lot better. So I would have told, yeah, just listen to my parents more and, you know, take their advice. <laughs> I want to send this to your mom and dad. You should. Yeah. yeah they're great people. Cause it is, <laughs> it is true. I mean, my dad coached me with, he coached me in every sport, mm -hmm. but he played basketball, baseball, football, American football. Okay. And he never played soccer. And so he would coach me in soccer. And especially as I was getting into my teenage years and I'm like, Oh, I have more experience than you all this yeah, stuff. So. I thought I was better. Yeah. And I was like, wasn't listening to it. And he was right about like everything about like my career and how I was playing. But you're just, you kind of know in the back of your head, like they're right, but it pisses you off that they're right and yeah. they're critiquing you. So you're just like, no, you don't know like all this stuff. And especially it was easy for me because I'm like, you never even played. Who you, you why are you telling me That's this? That's what I mean. Yeah. It's tough because like I was playing on a very competitive team and I'm having, it's like your dad like yelling yeah. at you to do certain things. But I would mm -hmm. go back to that and be like, hey, like you need to listen to this guy because he really does know what he's talking about. Yeah. I wish I could do that too. I know. Maybe I your could. dad knows a lot. He thinks I'm good. <laughs> yeah, my dad does rate you as a player and I don't get it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. I do. I play and I get it. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, awesome. I mean, that's all I, ha I really have for you. Do you have any other um, stories or anything that like that I didn't get to cover in your, your life that you really want to talk about? Oh, man. Not really. I mean, I, you kind of covered all the bases basically. Mm-hmm. I don't. I also don't know why Tulu put out his Instagram last time. That was super weird. What do you mean? Oh, like spelled it out, like popped yeah. up. Yours will be popped up on the beginning. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, no. Just you know, this was this was fantastic. To be fair, you know, good, I've never good. done anything like this. This is my first podcast. So yeah. You know. So tell tell Connor how he did. Make sure you know, be nice to him because this is his first first one. Yeah, I was nervous. I'm glad that I got to pop your <laughs> podcast cherry. Okay. Really? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay <laughs> no but thank you for coming on um it's been great being a teammate for you for the last uh how long has it been like three months three now? months i've known you for three months i know it's pretty crazy um and then oh i want to say too what do you want to do you've hinted at already in this podcast but how long do you want to play for um what do you envision for your career like goals and stuff and then what do you want to do afterwards um in terms of goals first i'd say like you know obviously you want everyone wants to strive to to make it to the MLS, I think, you mm -hmm. know, playing on the same level as my brother, I think would be fantastic. But, you know, if that's not viable, then just making the most out of my career in the USL, you know, I've, I've loved my time at Hartford so far. I, I don't know where my career is going to go, which is, it's just, it's a scary thing. <laughs> it really is. But um, just kind of give it my best go for as long as I can. And I think I'm self-aware enough to know, you know, when I, it's falling off a bit, mm -hmm. when I lose that ambition of always wanting to get better. Um, or I, my body is just, you know, it's too much for my body. Um, but yeah, cause I never want to look back in 30 years and be like, oh man, I maybe should have played for another year or two. So, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of age, it's tough to say it's, it's you know, everyone's body, I think kind of develops a little differently or, or the game affects it differently. So yeah, obviously I'm, I'm striving to be the best I can to be the best on, you know, for my team here and, you know do the best I can and then see what happens from there. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, you know, facility, you said you hinted at yeah, a facility. Having facility maybe. I'm happy to have my, my education. I'm, I'm currently also getting my, uh, my de uh, sports management degree from Bellevue university through, through the USL. So I'm proud to say that I'm almost done. Um, <laughs> thank God. Thank God. We can stop hearing about, I'm going to gotta go back to the hotel room and do my homework. I do have, to have a lot of homework due. I, that is one thing I, I am a procrastinator, but you have homework tonight. I do. <laughs> go finish your homework bro what are you doing here in the podcast <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i'm glad to have my education but yeah ultimately like having a facility with my brother doing something that we truly enjoy i think would be the end goal for us perfect all right well connor thanks for coming on the podcast yeah, i appreciate for sure. it for sure Anytime. and um yeah I'm, I'm hopefully get this out sunday but no promises gotcha yeah all right awesome, awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah. And then guys, this is the Against All Odds podcast. Please like, subscribe, and do all that shit. Bye.